Have you heard? A fast and effective gastropexy alternative for GDV prevention. The mere mention of gastric dilatation volvulus, or GDV, can instill fear in veterinarians and pet owners alike. And despite numerous critical care advances and increased owner awareness, this disorder is still associated with high morbidity and mortality. Some veterinarians advocate prophylactic gastropexy for their higher-risk patients, such as large, deep-chested Great Danes and Dobermans, and extremely nervous or rapid eaters. For female patients, this procedure is often a relatively easy addition to a routine ovariohysterectomy, but for male and female dogs that are not scheduled for abdominal surgery, a gastropexy to prevent GDV is frequently not performed. Until recently, the only options for the procedure were an open surgical or laparoscopic technique. The risks and recovery time associated with an open approach discourage many veterinarians from recommending this elective procedure, and the expensive equipment, procedure duration, and advanced training required for a laparoscopic technique make it less than desirable as well. However, researchers recently evaluated a new approach to preventing GDV. That procedure is endoscopically assisted gastropexy. The study included 24 client-owned dogs selected based on their increased risk for developing GDV and their healthy status as assessed by a complete blood count and serum chemistry profile. The dogs represented a wide variety of breeds and their ages ranged from under one year to over eight years old with the median patient age being two. The patients were surgically prepared and anesthetized following routine protocols and monitored throughout the procedure. Endoscopically assisted gastropexy involves insufflation of the stomach along with endoscopic visualization of stomach anatomy. Stay sutures were placed and pulled taut from outside the body behind the 13th rib and appropriate suture placement was confirmed endoscopically. An incision was made between the stay sutures through the skin, subcutaneous tissues, and abdominal musculature. The tissue was then dissected until the stomach was visible. The stomach was incised through the serosal and muscular layers of the pyloric antrum and sutured to the body wall before incision closure, stay suture removal, and stomach evaluation and decompression. The patients were routinely recovered and hydromorphone was administered to control pain. The dogs were hospitalized overnight before being discharged with tramadol prescribed for three to five days. The success of the procedure was evaluated laparoscopically one month after surgery in about half the dogs and six months after surgery in the remainder. Owners were contacted and surveyed at least one year after the surgery. All the dogs recovered well and none had experienced GDV. Laparoscopically, all of the gastropexies were in place at the pyloric antrum and the adhesions appeared strong. Biopsy specimens all showed mature scarring at the gastropexy sites. Although experienced surgeons performed the procedure in this study, they have taught the technique to other surgeons and think that most can become comfortable and proficient after completing a few procedures. In addition to being minimally invasive, endoscopically assisted gastropexy is safe, reliable, and fast, taking about 20 minutes of surgical time. This study was limited in size and follow-up time, so more research should be done to identify potential difficulties associated with the technique. But endoscopically assisted gastropexy appears to be a promising procedure to prevent GDV in high-risk dogs.